it was difficult to imagine what the war would bring. You learned soon enough when it came. I was born in Warsaw, in a district called Wola, and lived with my family, mother and father, and my sister, Maria. We were a happy family until the war came along. I don't recall worrying about it. It just didn't seem possible that something was coming that would be change our lives completely. I was too young, I think. I was on holiday with my father. We were sailing, and when the war came, everybody was panicked and trying to catch the last train to Warsaw. And I was telling my dad, look, everybody is going. Let's stay longer. There'll be more room on the, on the lake. It was difficult to imagine what the war would bring. You learned soon enough when it came. We got, got on a train in the end, and uh, on the way to, to Warsaw, about halfway through, I got off the train, and I was told by my father to go into the place where my mother and my sister were staying but they weren't there. Anyway, I got to Warsaw at the time when there was the first air raid and they were bombing main station, which was left me in a shock. I can't remember very much, but anyway, I got home, which wasn't too far from a main station. My parents and my sister were there. I think the situation was a bit panicky. There was an appeal that all the people who were capable of carrying weapons should leave Warsaw and go east to join Polish Polish army there, so they could fight, you know, the second wave, the Germans. We sort of packed our bags, if you know what I mean, took our bikes and went off. I immediately lost my mother. There was a terrific crowd of people leaving Warsaw. Immediately we crossed the river to the other side, which was a district called, of, called Praga. And there was such a crowd of people there and that's how we lost each other. There was nothing we could do. I was with my father for some time. We've seen, we've been in the, area which was occupied by Ukrainians who lived in Polish territory, but they turned out to be unfriendly. At least I've seen a Polish naval officer sitting in a car with, with a bullet through his head, so that was a shock for me to see a dead man sitting in a car. 
I suppose that was the first dead man I've seen in my life. And then we were traveling in a crowd of people on bikes. My inner tube blew up. I couldn't travel anymore. But I remember I stood there with my tube and held it in the air. And one kind guy stopped and gave me a, his spare. So I was mobile again. Because otherwise, if you were left on your own, I think the Ukrainians would finish us off, I think. I changed my date of birth and managed to join the Polish army. They put me on a, what was called a narrow gauge train, which took me further east until we came to a station called Horodiec, where I was in a second, I was in the first coach after the engine. And then we suddenly found ourselves faced with six Russian tanks standing there. I think somehow Luckily, we very quickly surrendered because you can imagine six tanks blowing us out. I remember I spent the night in a, in a cattle truck standing all night. And in the morning, I asked the Soviet soldier to take me to the loo on the station. So he did. And uh, while he was guarding the loo on the front, I bolted from the back. But all I knew that I had to make it get away from this place because, well, I certainly didn't want to go to Russian prison because everybody else was afterwards, as far as I know, we sort of marched off and you know what happened in Russian prisons and with the Polish prisoners. And luckily, I was in the first bench facing the militiaman who sat right across with a gun. And, but the door, it was a sliding door, it was open. And when we were passing some bushes, I jumped out and nothing happened. There were two, he was too afraid to go after me because the rest of the prisoners would probably bolt it or something. So it just gave me a chance to make a way and start walking in the direction of Warsaw. It's probably something like 150 miles to Warsaw from that place. All I remember was the kindness of people on a way who probably looked at me and realized I was a young boy. So they gave me food and bed. I got to a place called Garavolin, which was near Warsaw. And Warsaw at the time was still surrounded and fighting its way out, but it didn't make it. So when it surrendered, then we, the, the, the few people that were around me, we, there was an abandoned ambulance and somehow they managed to get some fuel out of an abandoned tank and vodka from local karchma, which was equivalent of English pub and mix some fuel, I don't know, but it started the engine and we traveled with this ambulance to Warsaw. 
and I got home and found my mothers and father there. So there was a great joy, and we were all thinking, what about my sister? And later on that evening, we heard the steps outside, and she came. So we were reunited, the whole family. That was the real beginning of our life under German occupation. The biggest change was my mother. She was very nervous generally, and suddenly she was completely free of all this, and it turned out that when she was away somewhere, she was bringing food to Polish soldiers who were under fire, and it cured her of all her nerves. I find it almost impossible. It was a different world. I felt amazed that I've been through it, and, and I'm here, because it really was crazy what happened.